chapter six this is your guided session for finding equivalence between fractions decimals and percentages okay these are your famous fractions okay so these are the ones that you need to put into your memory and um, into your long-term memory and ones that you need to remember you will need these next year when you move into year seven and obviously when you return to school with us um hopefully sooner rather than later so one half we know that one half as a decimal should be 0 0.5 so to work out what that is as a percentage we need to look at two decimal places because Percent means out of 100, and 100 has two zeros, so we're always looking for two decimal places. So what number do we put here? I hope you're all shouting at the screen and telling me it's a zero, a placeholder. So it must be 50%. One quarter then, as a decimal. For me personally, I always find it much easier to change it into a decimal first and then into a percentage, but it's up to you which way you want to do it. So one quarter as a decimal is obviously 0.25 already has two decimal places makes our life much much easier so as a percentage that's going to be 25 percent okay if you can't remember these you might want to note them down write them on something and stick it on a wall you might want to take a picture of it you might want to record yourself saying it over and over again but you need to put these log these into your memory because they are those famous fractions if you know one quarter is 25 percent we can definitely work out three quarters so we're going to do three times 25 25, 50, 75%. And again, same here, 0 0.25, so it's going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.75. Okay, they are your famous fractions. You need to remember those, take a picture of them, write them down, make a poster, whatever you need to do to help you to put those into your memory. Okay, next one then. This is slightly different because these are not all, well, they are famous fractions, but we can actually use some methods here to help us. So if you can't remember what the fractions is as a decimal, convert it. Okay, what two methods have we already looked at? So first one, let's have a look at one fifth. So one fifth, the first method we can do is we can change the denominator to either 10 or 100. So how is 5 related to 10 and 100? Okay, and I'm hoping that you can recognize that it's two times, isn't it? Okay, so if I times the bottom by 2, I have times the top by 2, which makes the top number 2 tenths. Therefore, this fraction here is equivalent to 2 tenths. And now you should be able to make it into a decimal pretty easy, I think. So if it's 2 tenths, it's got one zero, one decimal place, 0 0.2. If you know it's 0 0.2, then as a percentage, it needs to have two decimal places. One, two. So two decimal places. So what would that number be with two decimal places? We know it's going to be 20. Therefore, the answer must be 20%. Okay, one eighth. Slightly different this time. Another method then that we have used over the last few days about finding a decimal equivalent. So to give you a little heads up of what we're going to do, I'll draw this. And see if you can remember see if you can remember this um, from the work that we did I think it might have been on Monday actually so remember if you are not sure how to get the decimal equivalent you can always use the bus stop method you can divide so 8 divided by 1 so how many 8's go into 1 we know it's 0 put your decimal places in carry your 1 across and add your placeholder how many 8's go into 10 we know it's one, don't we? And we carry across the two, okay, with a zero. How many eights go into 20? Well, we know that's going to be two, don't we? And there's going to be four left over. Carry the zero. How many eights go into 40? We know that that is five, okay? So therefore, we know that the decimal equivalent for one eighth is 0 0.25 and that is another one that I would try to log into your memory write it down make a poster do whatever you can to remember that 1 8 is the same as 0 0.125 so as a percentage now then it gets a little bit trickier this time because we've got three decimal places I only really need two decimal places but we can't just ignore the five so what do you think the percentage might be Let's have a look, shall we? 
The answer is 12.5. So remember, two decimal places, that's what it is. It means out of 100. Okay, so it's 12.5. Okay, what about then one third? One third as a decimal, we know, is 0 0.3 recurring. Okay, so it means it just keeps going and going and going and going. If we were going to write this as a percentage then, it needs to be two decimal places. Don't forget that this one has got unlimited decimal places. So thinking about what we did for 0 0.125, what do you think the percentage might be? Let's have a look. Okay, well done to those children who said it was 33.3. .3. And we know that because we know that when we are converting into percentages, it needs to have two decimal places. Okay, it's two decimal places. But if there's numbers after it, then there has to be that decimal point in there for the percent. Okay, and that little dot at the top means recurring. Okay, so this means it's never ending, that three continues. Okay, these ones then, I think these are slightly easier. Is there an easier way then to work out what the decimal equivalents to these fractions are? So, first one, I think it's nice and easy, 23 hundredths. As a decimal, it's going to be what? I hope you're showing at the screen. 0 0.23, brilliant, because it's got two zeros, so it needs to have two decimal places. Okay, two zeros, two decimal places. How do you then write that as a percentage? So if you know it's 0 0.23, it's already got two decimal places, so it's going to be 23%. This one's then a little bit trickier. If it's five hundredths and it needs to have two decimal places, so your answer for a decimal is going to be 0 point something something. But the number has to be 5. If I put the number 5 here, I'm just going to change my colour for you, and I make it into two decimal places, is that the number five? And I hope you look at that and say, no, it's 50. It represents the number 50, which we don't want. So I need it to be the number five. So it needs to be two decimal places, but it needs to be the number five. So I'm going to put my five here, and my placeholder goes before it, okay? Because now that is five, isn't it? Okay, that is 0 0.05 because it has to have those two decimal places because it's got two zeros. So 0 0.05, and as a percentage, it needs to be two decimal places. So 0, 0.5, what number is that? Well, it's five, isn't it? It's going to be 5%, okay? 72 hundredths, I hope you're all looking at that and going 0 0.72. And as a percentage, it needs to be two decimal places. So it's going to be 72%, okay? I would say that these ones here are definitely the hardest for you to remember, okay? So when it is a single digit on top of 100, just be extra careful. So for example, if it is, I'm just going to change that colour because it's not very nice. It's a bit hard to see. Um, okay, let's say it's 2 then over 100. Remember, it needs to have two decimal places, so 0 point dot dot okay it's got to have two decimal places if i put my two here it becomes 20 and i can't have it 20 because it's a two so it's zero point put your two here and fill in your gap with your zero two decimal places means it's a two so as a percent it must be two percent okay if it was seven hundredths there's no difference it's going to be zero point line line because it has to have two decimal places because it's got 100 at the bottom so seven if i put my seven here it's going to be 70 so that's wrong so i'm going to put my seven here put my placeholder two decimal places to make it a percentage so it's going to be seven percent if you're still not 100 percent sure on that rewind back watch the video again and have a go at writing your own so one over 100 2 over 100, 3 over 100, 4 over 100, 5 over 100, and have a go at changing them into decimals and into percentages. That will really, really help you with this work. Okay, that is the end of your guided video. You might want to watch this a few times, okay, to make sure that you're really clear on how 
you can find the equivalents for fractions, decimals, and percentages. Remember, if you're not sure, there's those two methods. Change the denominator into 10 or use a bus stop. Good luck, and I hope you have a lovely day.